Joining us on Pirates Weekly this week is a new guest, the first guest outside of the Massachusetts Pirates organization. Uh, we're breaking the ice here. It is the Director of Digital Media and Public Relations for the Arizona Rattlers and the Tucson Sugar Skulls. His name is Steve Cusimano. Steve, you're joining us from Arizona today. Uh, you know, we spoke a little bit off air before we jumped on. You said that you're having a busy day so far. Uh, where you're at, it's only noontime. So what have you been doing today? Oh, man, it's been a busy day of uh, running social media graphics and writing press releases, getting stuff ready for uh, throughout the week and uh, a couple other in-house needs. I mean, it's just uh, a little bit of everything. You know, the days, uh, the tasks pile up here when you're working for two teams. So, Well, Steve, we'll, we'll get back to the Rattlers and the Sugar Skulls in just a second. But, you know, I kind of want to start by asking you about your roots. Um, you know, you're a native of Staten Island, New York which is close, very close to us, only a few hour car drive. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but doing some research before we got on, um, you moved to Arizona in 2006. So my question for you is, are you a New York sports fan or are you an Arizona sports fan? I grew up a New York sports fan, so that, that's never going to change. I mean, obviously I work in sports now, so I don't consider myself a fan of anybody, but Growing up, I was a huge, huge New York sports fan. It's, it's in my roots. My family uh, grew up a huge Mets fan, uh, New York Giants fan. So Knicks, Rangers, those are all my teams. <laughs> well, you mentioned the Mets. Um, Tim Tebow recently retired from uh, professional yeah. baseball. So he was in the Mets system. Do you think his next move is the IFL? Uh, I don't know if he would go uh, – go through those lengths it seemed like he really wanted to stick with baseball um it would be really cool to see and I, I wouldn't shut it down but uh you know uh I, I don't see it happening but it would like you said it'd be, it'd be cool <laughs> that would be pretty awesome we could bring Tebow in to the IFL you know taking the knee saying the prayer yes I love that that would be tremendous great media great media no question <laughs> well sticking with the Mets uh Steve you know we talked Tim Tebow real quick but you know, the Mets were pretty good, uh, you know, six years ago or so when they made the World Series with that loaded yep. team with Noah Syndergaard and DeGrom was pretty young back then. But the Mets made a big splash and uh, actually a trade this year. They're getting Francisco Lindor. I'd say he's the prize of the offseason, would you say? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, a lot of people like to think of the prize of the offseason being free agent signings. But I mean, when you think about adding potentially the best shortstop in baseball, it's big things and especially for the Mets they haven't had that great defense up the middle in a very long time and so when you add Lindor and they also signed James McCann behind the plate um, and they showed some flashes of uh, what is to come in spring training so it's if you're a Mets fan it's extremely exciting. Yeah we have plenty of uh, football to talk in this episode but one one other uh, baseball question I had um, you were actually a production assistant for the Tampa Bay Rays broadcast team uh, last season what was that experience like? Oh, it was great. Um, it started out uh, all the way back in January. So it was odd at first, just going to the stadium every day and working with, with no baseball games uh, at the Trop. But uh, it was great. I lived right next door to the stadium. Uh, we would commute to Port Charlotte for all the spring training games. And um, that's one of the best broadcast booths in all of baseball. So uh, the broadcast department for the Rays was uh, radio oriented. Their TV went through Fox Sports Sun. So they handled all of, of that type of stuff. But um, yeah, I worked with the Rays radio department and um, Dave, Andy and Neil are the three on air guys and they are tremendous uh, mentors, great guys to learn from. Uh, and, and just the upper management there, Chris Miller and Larry McCabe, um, all great guys. So I, I can't say enough good things about the Rays. It was a tremendous experience. Yeah. And Steve, your baseball experience, uh, it did not stop with the Rays or actually before the Rays. Um, you know, you also worked with the Cubs, the major league affiliate the Chicago Cubs and the minor league affiliates of the Houston Astros and the LA Angels. Uh, tell us about your roles uh, with those teams. That was great. Yeah. So the first of those actually was with the Cubs um, spring training of 2017. I would board up all of their, not all of their, but a majority of their spring training games. Uh, so just turn the broadcaster microphones on and off, uh, play the commercials. And that was the first experience that really gave me a chance to sort of pick the brains of the guys who work in their booth Um Mick Gillespie, who's one of the minor league voices, and then Len Casper, who's the uh, major league voice of the Cubs. I got to sort of pick their brains, and uh, that led me down a path for minor league baseball. And so started out with that Angels minor league team uh, out in Utah, moved there uh, when I was a sophomore at, at ASU. And then the following year, uh, when I was a junior, moved all the way to upstate New York uh, to work for the Astros affiliate. And 
those were easily two of the best summers of my life. It was a great experience, um, both as far as memories go and as far as the career goes. It was tremendous. Did the play-by-play -play for both teams, uh, media relations, um, and those are two experiences that I would never take back for anything. <laughs> Well, and you got all that experience, you know, like we talked about in the baseball world, but now, you know, obviously very busy with your IFL work, um, you know, like you said, um, working for both Arizona and Tucson, but um, what was it about the IFL um, that appealed to you and, and led you to make that transition from baseball now over to indoor, indoor football? So it started with really the, the Rattlers. I mean, the Rattlers are a really big deal out here in Arizona. Um, like you guys mentioned, I moved here when I was uh, pretty young and from as long as I've lived here, I've known who the Rattlers are. They're a winning franchise, um, the most dominant franchise in, in all of really uh, football. I mean, if you think about winning six championships, including um, contending for the championship seven of the last nine years, I mean, um, I've always known who the Rattlers are. I know they're about winning. Um, and it was just an exciting opportunity to, to enter this league, which is growing. And you guys are a perfect example of that with Massachusetts coming in. I mean, uh, this league is now spreading from, literally coast to coast. So uh, the opportunities and the growth uh, of this league is just, it's extremely exciting. So it's, it's a great place to be right now. It definitely is. Well, and, you know, we've talked with a lot of uh, Pirates players on this show about their long-term goals. And a lot of them say, you know, they want to get some game tape uh, to send to NFL teams and, and, you know, use the IFL as a stepping stone to eventually play in the NFL. I mean, for you personally, is your long-term goal to, um, you know, work in media at the NFL level? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a league of opportunity for everybody. Um, and obviously it, what it comes down to is just working hard wherever you are. And, um, you know, if that ends up resulting in a career in the NFL or major league baseball or wherever it may be, I have no problem staying right here. So um, just going to click away and, and see what happens. But that, that's something that I would absolutely love to do and would consider a goal of mine. Steve, um, you know, you've been in the Arizona, um, environment for I'd say most of your life now um, you know talk about you know because you know up here, up here in Boston in the Massachusetts area in New England you know we know about Arizona it's so far away you know Leverett I don't know about you but when I think of Arizona I think of the Grand Canyon I think of the desert the heat um, but you know Arizona is, is underrated when it comes to professional sports teams there is arguably more professional sports teams than anywhere else in the country other than perhaps New York uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a tremendous sports city. Um, the fans are great. And like you said, it's, it is underrated because you think about sports cities and you, you, like you said, you think of New York and Boston and sort of the huge markets and Phoenix is somewhere up there. You know, it's a large media market. And as a result, there are a lot of teams here and the fans are very loyal. Um, and, you know, com competition wise, you see the Cardinals are, you know, contenders every now and then, as well as finally the Suns are good now. And um, the Rattlers are the one constant team that is always a contender, as I mentioned before. I mean, uh, just a, a great sports town. And, and like you said, it, it, it fits the bill of, um, you know, it's it's the desert. It, it's, there's always uh, heat and intensity here in Arizona. So it's a uh, it's a it's a great sports town. You said it yourself. <laughs> Well, let's, let's talk about the Rattlers, shall we? Um, sure. You know, the Rattlers are uh, a powerhouse in the IFL. They've been in the IFL, um, I believe, since 2017. Uh, yep. in, the, in the Rattlers last year, went 14-0 and in the regular season, uh, ended up winning their first two playoff games before losing a very close championship game against the Sioux Falls Storm. Uh, just an unbelievable season. What is it like? Uh, coming into an organization that is literally at an all-time high? It's, uh, you know, it's a little bit humbling because, you know, you walk into a place like this and, and they already, they're doing everything right to begin with. So you want to sort of, sort of uh, stay, stay in your lane, do your job, know your path in Bill Belichick form, do your job. Um, yeah. You don't want to disrupt anything that's going on, but at the same time, you, you do want to contribute to all the success and, and the winning and, um, even in my own way, in the media world, I want to make us, um, you know, pump up the brand, make us look as good as we possibly can, be champions both on the field and off the field. So, um, you know, when you walk into any situation like this where you have an established head coach like Kevin Guy, who is uh, one of the greatest football coaches in, you know, football history, in my opinion, uh, you walk in here and just sit behind somebody like him and watch the way he operates here is, 
it's tremendous. And uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to learn. And uh, there's, uh, like I said before, it's, there's no better place to sort of sit back and, and contribute to a really successful franchise. Yeah. And you mentioned also, you know, uh, doing some of the media content and, and getting the team's name out there. Um, you know, we've talked with previous guests about how big exposure is for the IFL. Um, you know, what are some things you've done to, um, you know, raise that awareness for the team and, and try and generate even more interest? So with the Rattlers, um, a big thing is our history. I mean, this team has been around since 1992 and a lot of championships. So a lot of our fans um, like to sort of bask in the glory and think back on all of the, uh, what we like to call decades of dominance. So a lot of throwback type of videos get, um, you know, great sort of engagement with the fans and stuff like that on social media. So lots of throwbacks, whether it's pictures, videos, um, but at the same time, building excitement for our season and our league with, um, you know, we do have a lot of returning players who have established success in the IFL and, and in other leagues in, in years past, but, you know, pumping up our new exciting additions, guys who uh, have been extremely successful in college and in other leagues that they've played in. So it's sort of walking the line between um, finding a balance uh, between the decades of dominance in the past and, and what is to come. So it's uh, it's been a lot of, you know, in addition to, that, I guess, logistics side of thing, also um, mixing in graphics and videos and, and just really emulating uh, this operation as closely as possible to an NFL operation. Because at the end of the day, like we talked about minutes ago, I mean, it's, uh, it's a league of opportunity for everybody. And um, there's no reason why this organization shouldn't be at the same caliber as an NFL one. And that's why they've, they've been so successful for, for so many years. So emulating that in our uh, online branding and personality is it's a uh, priority number one for me. Yeah. And you mentioned, um, you know, how the team has added some, some new uh, faces um, in the off season. And, you know, if we're looking at, um, you know, both of the teams you work with, um, who are some, uh, some key guys, you know, we should watch out for this coming season, uh, both of the Rattlers and also the uh, Sugar Skulls. Uh, so certainly the quarterbacks for both teams are what comes to mind immediately. Um, and one thing about both of these organizations is that everybody regardless of what they've done in the past, everybody has to earn their position. So nobody is set in stone. Of course, everybody's got to go to camp and compete and uh, work for their roster spot, but immediately jumping off the page, uh, Drew Powell, former IFL champion uh, for the Rattlers. He's the quarterback uh, took us to the championship in 2019. And then on the other end, EJ Hilliard uh, just signed with the sugar skulls this off season um, for uh, from quad city another former mvp uh two extremely prolific quarterbacks and then keeping it on the offensive side uh both of the running backs as well mike jones uh, down in tucson was the ifl offensive player of the year uh, for his efforts uh in 2019 and also uh, daryl monroe here at the rattlers um had battled through some some injuries uh, as of recently but he's back with the team and um, holds several records for the team. He had 11 touchdowns in one game as recently as 2019. So um, just two extremely high flying offenses and great secondaries as well. But uh, those are the two, I guess, position groups that jump off the board immediately for both teams, ironically enough. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, the offensive firepower, it's especially exciting, you know, in the IFL with the shorter fields, um, you know, with some of the offensive talent, you know, how much scoring there is. And I think, you know, that's what makes it such an exciting brand of football is just, you know, all the offensive production. Absolutely. And the funniest part is, you know, I mentioned uh, the single game record that Daryl Monroe holds for touchdowns in a game for the Rattlers. The funny part about that is we needed every one of those touchdowns to win that game. I mean, we needed 11 touchdowns and then some just to win the game. So that that's a testament to how exciting this brand of football is and, and how high scoring these games are. And I think this league is, it's going, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. It's going, uh, very good places, I, I think. Did you say 11 touchdowns in one game? 11 in one game. Yeah, that was, uh, oh that was the team record. Yeah. And, and like I said, we needed every one of those to win that game last year or 2019. Oliver, <laughs> yeah, Oliver, didn't you have 12 at uh, recess one day back in elementary school? <laughs> back in uh, back in first yeah. grade. Back in Oliver's first grade. not impressed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's way more impressive than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of uh, – you know, like those old shows, uh, like Rugrats, like on Nickelodeon or something like, or Hey Arnold playing like at recess or something like that. I don't know if you guys know those ones, but yeah. Yep. Um, Steve, you know, you did an outstanding job mentioning the players. Um, and you were also talking about, you know, your role with the media and how you really like to 
um, you know, involve like the throwback videos from the Rattlers history, but something that has, that I have to bring up that is, uh, and I believe I, I chatted with uh, you about this um, maybe a few weeks ago when we were talking, but uh, on your social media, um, I think the, uh, the guy that's standing out the most is wide receiver Jared Harrington, uh, the 2019 IFL most improved player. Uh, he's all over your social media on workout Wednesdays. Uh, he led the Rattlers in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns last season. Uh, this guy is, uh, is, is becoming a, a great IFL player. Uh, can you speak on him? Oh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention him. I'm glad you brought up Jared because he is, uh, you know, I, I don't want to call anybody, I don't want to put anybody above, you know, any other, anyone else, but he is one of the most hardworking players I've ever met in my entire life. I mean, and it's evident through, like you said, our social media videos. I mean, every couple of weeks, he's setting a new personal record with his lifting and uh, he's just, he will not be outworked by anybody. He's a tremendous player. Uh, and I expect massive things from Jared Harrington. And that was just, you know, he was the most improved player of the league on the most recent season, I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, especially with such great prolific quarterback play under center, regardless of who the quarterback is. Um, this is a guy that he, you know, the sky's the limit for him as well. I mean, he's got every tool necessary and uh, he's, he's an extremely impressive player individual. And to be quite honest, he is the heart and soul of the team as well. just in terms of his personality. I mean, he is friends with everybody, always pumping everybody up and, and I'm excited for him to get out here and, uh, really just emulate, again, the heart and soul of this franchise. And um, Steve, I'm glad you brought up head coach Kevin Guy because uh, you, you said it yourself, he's one of the greatest coaches ever. I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't bring him up again. Um, the mm -hmm. thing that stands out the most to me in Leverett, I know you're going to love this, is, uh, you know, we talk, and Leverett brought this up earlier, how we talk about, you know, Pirates, players, they talk about wanting to go to the next level. Um, since Kevin Guy took over as head coach for the Rattlers in 2008, he has 51 players go on to sign NFL contracts. Uh, so he is uh, not only, you know, doing a great job coaching on the field for the Rattlers, but he's helping these players advance to the next level. Um, I just think I, I thought that stat was amazing. And that's that's a perfect testament to who Kevin Guy is. I mean, he's all about the players and helping them grow and succeed and creating opportunities for them, not just in football, but outside of football. I mean, he teaches so many life lessons that are invaluable to uh, not just football, but life that, that are, you would never learn from anyone other than Kevin Guy. I mean, he's going to tell it like it is, and he's going to coach these players hard, but it's, it's all at, at the expense of, of um, you know, what's best for them, not just in terms of their careers, but uh, you know, again, their lives in total. So it's, it's uh, and that's, that relates obviously to the team success. I mean, when these guys are being coached that hard and, and uh, being taken care of by Coach Guy, uh, it results in wins and championships. And, uh, you know, that's why the Rattlers have been so successful for the Kevin Guy era. Yeah, well, and that's what's cool about the IFL in general. You know, you and Oliver both mentioned um, how Kevin Guy has, has helped so many different players um, get to the NFL level. Um, and, you know, for example, the Pirates, um, you know, our team president, uh, owner and GM, Jawadi team, has talked a number of times about how he wants to see Pirates, guy, uh, Pirates players you know, advance to the NFL and he's not going to try and hold guys back who have that opportunity just to keep them on the roster and, and um, you know, help the pirates win games. And that's not the case in every league, you know, for example, in the Canadian football league, there are certain restrictions um, that make it, you know, hard for guys to jump right to the NFL. Um, and that's why I think, you know, of the different options you have out there, if you're not drafted in the NFL coming out of college, I think the IFL, is, is one of the best options because there's that room to quickly advance to the NFL. And most franchises are on board with guys doing that and actually support them in that. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's a conversation that that is had often. If players are, you know, looking for their next opportunity, it, it's ultimately to set themselves up for the one after that. You have to think two steps ahead. And the IFL is a perfect uh, opportunity for that to happen. I mean, if you can uh, if you're killing it out here and, and you get an opportunity at a higher level, then by all means, you're free to go. So it's, uh, that's what it's all about. And that's what, that's, what's, uh, you know, one of the great things about the IFL. Steve, uh, I, I have one more uh, tidbit on Kevin guy that I want to ask you. Um, I know you're close with him. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the Rattlers went 14 to zero in the regular season. They won their first two playoff games. Uh, it's very similar to uh, around here, how the Patriots went, uh, in 2007, they went undefeated until the Super Bowl game. 
ha have you heard Kevin Guy whisper any whispers around, um, you know, the offices or the arena that you know he he's looking to uh, go undefeated again and this time uh, win the United Bowl. Oh, it's an it's an expectation here. I mean, he completely it's not even a question. He expects to to you know win every game and and coach out there and uh, just put the best possible uh, product out there on the field. And it's, it's something that's doesn't even need to be said because in this building, it's really just implied. I mean, in this building, it's, it's about winning and they expect to win every single game and contend for another championship and win another championship. Um, that's, that's the, the, the MO here for Kevin Guy and the Rattlers. Well, and you know, I asked you earlier about some of the specific players to watch, but as far as teams in the league, you know, obviously leaving aside, um, your two teams in the Pirates, who are, you know, some of the toughest opponents going to be um, across the league? So uh, obviously first coming to mind is the Sioux Falls Storm that we just mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. The Rattlers played them in the championship two of the last three years. And um, again, it starts from the top. Great, great leadership uh, on the coaching staff and uh, a, a team that that is going to, I think, be prolific once again. Very well run organization and um, very, very well acclimated in the IFL and um that's one that comes to mind uh, just looking down at our schedule. Another very well-established team is uh, the Green Bay Blizzard. Um, I don't know a ton about their roster, but, uh, you know, coaching staff is great. And again, a really well-established team that I, I expect uh, to be contending this year. Um, you know, those are the two that come to mind. Again, like you guys said, aside from the, the first three franchises that, that you mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's cool with the IFL. You know, you have some of the franchises you mentioned, which have a lot of history, and there are also some new franchises with the Pirates and a few others. So I think there's going to be one team um, this season. I'm not sure who it's going to be, but one team who surprises everyone and, and uh, overachieves a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that because what's exciting about this is that there are all these new teams that had success in other leagues. You look at a team like the Duke City Glad Gladiators, uh, had a lot mm -hmm. of success in the league that they most recently played in. Uh, and now they come to the IFL, which is, to be honest, a step up. And you're going against great competition like the Rattlers and the Sugar Skulls and the Pirates. And, uh, you know, it's it's a completely different animal. But, you know, everyone has been successful in their own uh, mind, in their own league uh, competitively so it's it's exciting to see how that's all going to match together this year and put out, put out a good product here for the IFL and and Steve uh we've been talking a lot of Rattlers but uh you know I, I would I would be mistaken if we didn't talk more Sugar Skulls uh while we mm -hmm. still have you on uh Steve Cusimano director of digital media and public relations for the Rattlers and the Sugar Skulls so the Sugar Skulls played their inaugural season in 2019 uh, they went 500, but they made the playoffs. And uh, you mentioned earlier how they signed EJ Hilliard, the uh, quarterback that came over from Quad City. Uh, but, you know, we talked about Coach Guy, um, arguably one of another outstanding head coach is Dixie Wooten, uh, who coached with the Barnstormers, led them to a championship. I believe he was a coach of the year. So, you know, we talked about Coach Guy. What is it like having uh, Dixie Wooten also in-house? Oh, Coach Wooten is a great character. I mean, uh, like you said, another proven winner. Uh, if you ask a lot of the teams in this league who are the best coaches, a lot of them are going to say either Kevin Guy or Dixie Wooten. Uh, he's a motivator, guy who's very close with the players, uh, and he just he instills work ethic, and he's a, a great guy to sit behind as well. And I can't wait to, to again, till all the players get out to Tucson and, and I get another experience of that. But, you know, to start a franchise up uh, and in the second year, pull in a coach that is that well-established and decorated and has had that great of a career. It speaks volumes about the, the Sugar Skulls organization and the big things that they are going to do for that community. Steve, uh, one more question on the Sugar Skulls. Um, you know, I think personally they have one of the coolest names in the IFL, the Sugar Skulls. Um, can you tell us about how uh, Tucson came to choosing the Sugar Skulls as the team name back in 2019? So I don't know um, the whole story by heart, but I, um, the, the Guy family has told me about it uh, several times. Kathy Guy is uh, really the, the face of the franchise and, and the owner. Um, and they kind of went with something that was going to be representative, representative of the city of Tucson. And um, with a big Hispanic community, the Sugar Skulls made a lot of sense and have the Day of the Dead. That's sort of the, uh, the big uh, sort of mascot and, and that type of thing. But um, you'd have to ask Kathy Guy on that one. Uh, but 
you know, it, it, there is a great story behind it. I just feel bad. I, I don't know it by heart okay. at this point, but um, you know, it's very representative of the city of Tucson. Um, no question. And yeah, I just had one uh, final question before we wrap up. Um, we've talked a ton, um, you know, on this show about what a year, weird year 2020 was now heading into 2021 with the pandemic and everything in, in sports. It's been unusual because, you know, obviously some college and pro teams canceled their seasons, other teams played without fans. But, you know, obviously at the beginning of any season, in any sport, there's that increases in excitement. But when you say, um, you know, with the teams you work with, the level of excitement is higher just because um, we haven't as, had as much to, to look forward to in the past year. And finally, you know, we get to see some football and get out there and kind of, um, you know, get everyone in the community fired up. Absolutely. And I, I would say that that's the case with all sports um, entering 2021, just that everybody had sort of a watered down season last year, if any season at all. But with the IFL in particular and the Rattlers and Sugar Skulls, I mean, you look at how much has changed since the last down of football was played in the IFL in 2019. I mean, we have so many new teams, including the Pirates and so many new players and, and just a league that, you know, rather than being complacent and sort of um, using the pandemic as an excuse to sort of, uh, you know, be complacent, you know, this league has built up and they have taken advantage of, of an opportunity to continue growing and not a lot of the other sports or franchises can say that. And that's part of what makes this particular season for the IFL so exciting. In addition to the fact that we're just going to get out there um, and play football. I mean, it's exciting in any sport, like I said, but, you know, thinking about this league and these teams in particular, it's that much more exciting for this community. Well, Steve, uh, thank you again for coming on Pirates Weekly. Um, you know, can't tell you how, uh, grateful I am to have you on the show, Leverett and I both. Um, again, Steve Cusimano, uh, the first guest on Pirates Weekly outside of the Massachusetts Pirates organization. Uh, get ready, Steve, because training camp is about to start. Uh, the Pirates, they travel out to Tucson in, in the Pirates week nine. Uh, the Pirates have two bye weeks before that. And then the Rattlers come to play at the DCU Center in Worcester in July. Um, Steve, we'll be talking to you again soon. Um, I'm sure we'll see you throughout the season and uh, good luck, um, you know, especially with training camp right around the corner. Absolutely. It's coming up quick and uh, I look forward to those trips and, and seeing you guys as well and uh, keep up the great work and, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes this season. I'm very excited for the entire league. All right. Uh, Levert Ball, Oliver Nisi, co-host of Pirates Weekly, Steve Cusimano, again, our guest this week. Pirates Nation, we'll see you next week.